All right, today I'm gonna to show you how to create some cartoon-like render graphics using D5. Often students get carried away with realistic renders that often become more about the rendering than they do the architecture. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to simplify the view and create more cartoon-like graphics for presentations. So using D5, we're gonna open up a new file here. So by default, um, you're gonna have terrain turned on. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm also going to go to effect. I'm gonna apply a LUT and set the LUT to Vibrance C. Um, going back to environment, I'm gonna set this to HDRI and set the HDRI to pure white. So it'll be a full white background without any realistic sky. Um, so I'm gonna go to import my file. So import whichever uh, project you're planning on using. Once that's uploaded, you'll be able to click on it. We're gonna load it in, just gonna drop it in. And you'll see that any colors from materials are showing up. Those uh, we're gonna override soon. Um, but while we're still here, so under effect, we're gonna um, go down and change uh, a few things. I'm gonna add outline mode to the very bottom of the style here. So turning that on, um, we're going to leave this at 50. This line weight is pretty good. If we want to increase that a little bit to make it more diagrammatic, we can. But yeah, I think 50 is good. These graphics are going to be similar to a SketchUp export, but it'll allow us to add elements of uh, kind of sun shading and shadow and slightly you know more subtle atmospheric effects as well so um, again setting this as the background will kind of just wash everything out which isn't our true intention with this we, we do want to show materials so with this view turned on um, we have line weights turned on now um, we're going to change the materials so Clicking on assets, we can go to material and we're going to go to others and create a custom material. So this will allow us to start with this kind of default white material and then going to base color, simply changing the color. So again, the, the goal here is to create these kind of flat materials without any reflection uh, to make this look like a cartoon graphic. So doing that again, um, again, create custom material, click on that, and then go into each of these and change it to either shade or color that you're looking for. Um, reminder, the keyboard shortcut to material picker is I. And then let's say this one's selected. If I wanted to duplicate that material and apply it to this, I would just go to duplicate. Okay, so I can apply it to multiple objects. So I would just go around the project, apply these uh, kind of flat materials to everything. Um, if you want to leave the windows and openings as glass, that might make sense here. Um, another thing I want to do is turn on shadow. So under environment, I've set my uh, background or my skylight to HDRI. It's this pure white 
image, but I also want to turn the sun on because I want this shadow. So you can play with the sunlight intensity, um, the sun disk radius, the larger this number, the more blur you're going to have in the shadow. And you can set the direction of the sun instead of following the HDRI image, which would take the brightest spot of the HDRI and use that as the sun location. I'm going to set this to custom and be able to manually change the altitude and azimuth of the sun. So if I want to create this shadow effect through the perforations on this view, I can customize that based on the shadow I'm looking for. So we've brought in materials, we've imported the model, we turned on um, this outline mode. The last thing we're going to do is, in, in D5 at least, is to go to two-point perspective. So under camera, I'm going to set this two-point perspective. For you, this may be at perspective at first but I'm gonna change this to two point. That aligns all the verticals, um, which can be useful when you're creating a 3D view, um, especially if we're gonna Photoshop people into the project as cartoon graphics, uh, which we're gonna do. We're gonna Photoshop people in. All right, so once I'm happy with this view, I'm going to create a new scene. So this will save that particular view. I can toggle to another view, create a new scene there, and maybe a third one. And you'll see the distortion uh, when you have two-point perspective on. It can be um, kind of difficult to, to get an accurate view, but this is great for kind of diagrammatic purposes. So we'll say Maybe this one will turn off that and go for more of an aerial shot. I'll save that. All right, so each of these scenes can now be rendered. So I'm going to go to image. So when we're ready to export, I can just click on the scene and it'll take me to that particular view. And I'm going to export these in 4K. Sometimes by default channels is turned on. This is great if you're gonna do a lot of post-processing, if you wanna uh, remove some of the background, um, and, you know, be able to select objects based on their material and things like that, or based on depth. Um, you can turn channels on. I'm gonna leave this off. So once we're happy with this view, I'm going to render it. Okay, now that that finished rendering, I'm gonna open up Photoshop and add people and some entourage here. Now you can also add people and entourage in D5, um, but to keep with the more cartoon-like graphics of this, I'm gonna open up Photoshop. All right, so we have this preliminary image. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to open up some PNG people that I've downloaded in the past. So I'm going to select these, Control A, Control C, Control V, and paste them into this new layer. Control T to scale, hold Shift to scale proportionally. Now getting the height right is going to be a challenge in a view like this. Um, one thing you can do in a 3D model is to create a, you know, a line or some kind of reference that you know is uh, close to the height of a person. You know, based on how far back they are in the scene, there's gonna be, you know, the effects of perspective are gonna, you know, scale someone down. So those have to be considered uh, as you're doing this. If the horizon line or you know, if the camera were at the horizon line, then everyone's eye line would line up to, to regardless of how far back they are in the space. Um, so it's just about creating an accurate scale for people. Control A, Control C, Control V, and Control T to scale. So 
So for example, if this person were in the foreground, I would line up their eye line. And then it's just about getting the scale of the person right. So if this looks approximately right, then I would leave it. It's good to have people at different depths to create a sense of depth and space. Control T. Often putting people together, usually two people together, is another uh, important strategy when creating 3D views. So I've rendered this to be kind of grayscale uh, as an image. So that's a consideration when you're creating views like this. Um, you know, I could have added some pops of color to make it more cartoon-like. In fact, we can do that here. So rather than just making everything grayscale, if I choose a custom material and set my base color to be something a little more cartoon-like, And again, if I want to duplicate that material, I can do that here. So this would be maybe more of a cartoon graphic uh, in this case, which again, can play with and uh, experiment with. Um, so I've added people. I'll also add some trees. Control O for open. Um, some of these plants might do the trick, but downloaded this architectural starter kit a while back. So opening up some PNG trees that I've downloaded in the past, these might be good enough. I'm going to open this up. And then I'm going to turn down the opacity so this can kind of fade to the background. I'd have to trim this a little bit or apply a clipping mask to get this to show up behind the building. So what I'll do, let's add a clipping mask to this. So I'm just going to select a portion of it and create Clipping mask here. Oops, wrong side. So with that selected, this is the layer of the tree. I'm going to click on this clipping mask here. So now it appears to be behind and clicking on this uh, kind of image thumbnail. I'm going to turn down the opacity of that here. I'll add a little bit of landscape on the other side as well. And again, we're not going for realism. This is more of an abstraction and making this more about the architecture itself than realistic images. We're not trying to convince anyone that this has already been built. In the case of this project it has, but not in the case of this purpose of the tutorial. So same thing, I'm going to create a clipping mask for this, or a layer mask. using that. Alright, so foliage, trees, uh, clouds, um, all of that can be added this way. Um, I can turn down the opacity for these people as well to make them less prominent. 
All right, so that's how to create a cartoon graphic using D5 and a little bit of Photoshop.